A single knock at the door. Not the rhythmic tapping of an invited guest. Not the pattern of thumps to get a homeowner's attention. Just a single knock. Assuming it to be a noise of nature, especially considering that the time was 11 p.m., I left it. I live alone and expected no visitors that night. But then, it came again. The second, yet still painfully single, knock. To call it a knock is to exaggerate. This was a bang. Not a gentle ask to be allowed in, but a demand for attention. I glanced out the window, seeing nothing. Yet, even as I looked at the empty pavement in front of my house, I heard it for a third time. The same sound, confidently coming from my front door and echoing through my home. Curious of a blind spot from my view, I went up to the source of the sound and looked right through the peephole. My eyes saw nothing. Yet, my ears disagreed. As a thud occurred that was so loud I could feel it emanating through the door. Expecting a bat or other creature to be somehow stuck, I opened the door to investigate. If this noise had continued, I knew I wouldn't be able to sleep. This still rang true as a fact. But not because of the noise. I couldn't sleep that night because of what I saw. Standing outside, in a place that had been void of anything just moments ago, was now a gray figure. It was humanoid, but a far stretch away from human. I could only describe its features as empty. No soul behind them. A vessel that could move and imitate life, but was no way alive. It had no eyes, and yet I felt it staring right through me as I froze in fear. Its thin posture was only slightly taller than me. As weak as it looked, I knew that it would be a bad idea to mess with it. Slits all over its skin opened as thick blood began to ooze from these new wounds. From each one, a chain shot out, burying themselves into the ground. A mouth, which I had not noticed before, opened. Its teeth were many. It let out a shriek as it grew taller. The rusted chains creaked and clanged as the figure struggled. They were pulling it down. It did not struggle by attempting to get away. Its growth seemed to be how it planned to escape. For every inch the chains pulled it down, it would grow two inches. It had become an immovable tower of fear. If reality does not truly exist, this thing 
is what makes me agree. It fed on the terror of those around it. It reached the size of my house, and the chains began to work twice as hard. The figure became stiffer as moving became more difficult. It sunk into the ground, continuing its cry. The screams are etched into my brain. Soon, only its now stretched, disfigured head remained. Its growth had caused the head to distort. Its inhuman mouth screeching in my face before being totally dragged under. There I stood, on the edge of the pitch black outside, as the light from my hallway spilt out. No evidence of the horrors remained. Looking down the street, I could see only houses. Everything was quiet. Everything except my mind. I stood like that for a few moments. I didn't feel any presence of danger anymore. I felt numb. The terrors of mere seconds before contrasted heavily with the empty night before me. I couldn't shake off the feeling that if I hadn't opened the door, if I hadn't decided to look into the abyss of the night, the creature would have allowed itself into my home. The process of being cast back into the underworld only began when I saw it. In a way, despite my fear running deep, I had still faced it. Perhaps I should look for the source of unknown noises more often. After all, what's scarier than that which you cannot find?